Hey, Cam20 team. It is time to talk about stoichiometry with gases. So last week and this week, we were looking at gravimetric stoich, which has three things, mole to mole and mole to mass and mass to mass. Okay. Now, what gases have that, that those other substances don't is they have temp their uh, different temperatures and volumes and pressures. So do you remember the R constant from yesteryear? The R constant way back in the gas law unit, 8.314, yeah, that's coming back. Now, the good thing about gas stoichiometry is the setup is exactly the same as everything else. The first step is write a balanced reaction. Okay, we need to write a balanced reaction because we need the proper mole ratio. The second thing is include all the available variables. So write down what you know, write down what you have. And that also includes the mole ratio. And the third step is always start with the unit you need. Okay, very important. Now, one of the things you have to remember is when we have gases, gases are gonna be different than temp volume. You're gonna have temperature. Temperature needs to be in Kelvin. So you have to add 273 to it. I think it's like 273.15. You may have volume. The volume should be in liters. And you'll need the R constant from time to time. Um, and that's 8.314 liters kPa mole Kelvin. Okay. There's nothing to it but just to start and to show you guys a couple examples today. Okay. First example. If 175 grams of propane burns, what volume of oxygen measured at STP is required for the reaction? Oh boy, there's another thing that's a blast from the past. Okay, let's try this out. So propane and propane accessories. If you're like, how did he know the formula for propane? You could check it out on your, dead, your data booklet has that table of all the different formulas of the different compounds. This is a hydrocarbon combustion, so we make carbon dioxide and water. And then when we balance it, we need a three there, we need a four there, and a five. Okay, let's write down what we know. We have 175 grams of propane of C3H8. Okay, and we're, we, we're solving for volume of oxygen question mark, volume, oxygen. So these are the two things that we're comparing. We're not even comparing anything on the right-hand side. So the mole ratio is five moles of oxygen for every one mole of propane. Okay, now there's a couple extra things I need. It says the oxygen is at STP. Now I'm not expecting anybody to remember the STP constant, but it's 22.4 liters per mole. So because it has that constant, I need to write that down. Uh, 22.4 liters per mole. Liters oxygen per mole oxygen. Okay. And because this is, has a mass variable right here, this is a mass, I need the molar mass of it. Mass and molar mass goes together. So I need the molar mass of propane. So three carbons and eight Hydrogens is 44.11 grams per mole. So 44.11 grams propane. Just going to get rid of this. Per mole propane. Okay. Do I need the molar mass of oxygen? Does this question give me mass or require me to get mass of oxygen? And the answer is no. Molar mass should only go with a mass variable. 
That's why I need the molar mass of the propane because I'm given a mass variable of it. If you're given a constant like STP or SATP, make sure you link it to the thing that it belongs to. All right, we are about ready to start. Okay, so let's start the math here. We are solving for liters of oxygen. So I have to start with liters of oxygen on top. And the only thing that has that is right here, 22.4 liters oxygen per mole oxygen. So I'm going to go 22.4 liters oxygen per mole oxygen. Okay, once you use something, it's gone forever. I got to get rid of moles oxygen. The only place that has moles oxygen is right here, my mole ratio. My mole ratio has oxygen. 5 mole oxygen for every 1 mole propane. Awesome. Okay, that's good. Okay, now i got to get rid of moles propane. Well, it's in the molar mass right here. But it's on the bottom, so I have to flip the molar mass. So the mole propane goes on top. And then the 44.11 grams propane goes on the bottom. Moles cancel. Lastly, I need grams. Oh, that's gone. Can't use that again. And that's the 175 grams of propane. And if we look, we've canceled out everything except for liters. So now we just got to put that into our calculators. So 22.4 times 5 times 175, okay, that's the whole thing, so I'm going to press equal on my calculator, that gives me 19,600, I'm going to divide that by 44.11, and I get, four to three sig figs, 444 liters. So there's a couple little extra things that are added, one, we still need molar mass if the question gives us mass, and we still need constants if the question talks about them. All right, we're going to try another question now. This is the only other question we're going to do today, so we don't overload you guys. So it says ammonia is made from the formation of nitrogen and hydrogen. Okay, so nitrogen, right, a balanced reaction is always our first step. Nitrogen and hydrogen give us ammonia. This is not balanced. Two there to balance out the nitrogens. Three there to balance out the hydrogens. Okay. Let's write down everything we know. It says, what volume of ammonia, okay, question mark, volume ammonia. So that's what the question's wanting us to solve. At 450 kilopascals, 450 kilopascals, okay, and 80 degrees Celsius, okay, let's just quickly change that to Kelvin. That's 353 Kelvin can be recovered from a reaction with 7.5 kilograms of hydrogen. Okay, so 7.5 kilograms. All right, that's about all that we know. Now, there's a couple extra things we can have. The hydrogen has a mass variable, so I need the molar mass of hydrogen. So it's two hydrogens is 202 grams hydrogen per mole hydrogen. Now, I'm going to leave the hydrogen in... Uh, kilograms because I'm solving for a liter and and what's going to what I'm going to get in the end is a kiloliter if you don't like that you can just times up by a thousand so you get 7,500 I'm just going to leave it okay now there's a couple things I'm missing one is the mole ratio right the mole ratio between those is three mole hydrogen for every two mole ammonia okay remember we need their mole ratio we're not even talking about nitrogen, but we are comparing these. Now, here's the tricky thing. Are you given a constant for ammonia? Does it say STP or SATP? And the answer is no. Are, do we have variables that include temperature and pressure? If the answer is yes, we need the R constant for ammonia. Okay? And it looks like this. 8.314 liters kpa mole ammonia okay per kelvin now if i wanted to really go crazy 
actually, you know what? Just to show you guys what you should be doing, not to save time, but to show you what you should be doing. Okay, that's kilopascals of ammonia. That's Kelvins of ammonia. So really, my R constant should look like this. 8.314 liters ammonia. KPA ammonia. Mole ammonia. Calvin ammonia. Yes, I know it's a bit of a prop, bit of a pain in the butt, but that keeps things straight about what everything belongs with. As you get better, you can lose the like what it belongs to, but you can easily make mistakes if you forget what stuff belongs to. Okay. What is the question asking us to solve for? It's asking us to solve for liters of ammonia. So where do I have a liter? Uh, aha, there it is. So it's actually in the R constant. So had I not written the R constant, I would be not able to solve this problem. So I need to start with the R constant. 8.314 liters ammonia, LaPascal ammonia, mole ammonia, Calvin ammonia. Okay, perfect. All right, that's gone. Now let's start to cancel out like the Calvins and the and the kilopascals. Let's get rid of those. So um, we got Calvins on top. So 353 Calvin ammonia, and let's get rid of kilopascals, 450 kilopascals ammonia, just to get rid of that, because I don't want those in there. Whoop, whoop. I don't want to, oops, I don't want to cancel out everything there, so, oh, no, 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 that's all together, shoot. Well, that's life. Let's just say I only canceled out the Calvin, okay? So the Calvin ammonia is gone. Kilopascals gone. That 353 is still there. Okay. All right. So that's gone. That's gone. Now we have moles of ammonia on the bottom. Let's get rid of moles of ammonia by using our mole ratio and flipping it. Two moles of ammonia over three mole hydrogen. Okay. Mole ammonia cancels. Now I have moles hydrogen on the bottom. And I can use moles hydrogen to cancel that, but I'm going to have to flip the molar mass. Mole hydrogen over 202 grams hydrogen. Okay. And now I need to get rid of grams. So that's where that 7.5 kilograms comes into. Kilograms hydrogen over 1. So the grams cancel. And as you can see, as I kind of theorized, I'm going to be left with a K and an L kiloliters. So that, that works out. It's, that's fine. Okay. Math-wise, times everything on the top together, 8.314 times 353 times 2 times 7.5. So that's my whole top. I'm going to press equals, or you can do that in brackets. So I get about 44,000 divided by the bottom in brackets, 450 times three times 202. Okay, and I wind up with getting to three sig figs, 16.1 kiloliters. Okay, now if you had converted that into grams, you would have 7,500 grams, and your answer would be a lot bigger, something like that. Okay, six, one, two, three, no, one too many zeros. It would be, look at this. And then you could turn it into scientific notation. 1.61 times 10 to the, to, oh, 10 to the, this is lead, liters, sorry, solving for liters. Okay. Now, that's a taste of gas stoichiometry. It's the same kind of setup, and it's going to take a little bit of practice. Um, you guys today on Wednesday are still having a little bit more time to work through that gravimetric problem. So, I'm going to leave this uh, right here. That's all we're looking at today. And tomorrow we're going to practice some more. And I'm, we're going to give you guys the lab that Zelensky and I have shot with gas stoichiometry for the assignment next week that it will have gas stoichiometry on it. And uh, that's the end of this lesson.